Hello everybody, here we are once again preparing for a physics test. This one on waves, sound, and music. Um, we're going to only look at the trickier problems here, beginning with, oh, let's say problem number three. So, let's see. I think we're good. Okay, so on problem number three, we are looking at a, a tube, and that this tube is closed on the left end and open on the right end, and it's got a length of 12 centimeters, which you should automatically convert into meters, 0.12 meters. And you are being asked, what's the third lowest frequency that will resonate? Well, we know that the condition for resonating in a closed tube is L equals N lambda over 4. And N in this case is a counting number that goes 1, 3, 5, dot, dot, dot. We're looking for the third lowest frequency. The first lowest frequency, the fundamental frequency, is 1. The second lowest frequency is when n equals 3, and so we're after the third lowest frequency, n equals 5. So now we have L equals 5 lambda over 4. Our L is given as 0.12. The 5 and 4 are known, so here we're going to just solve for lambda. Once we know lambda, we can figure out what that frequency is by using V equals F lambda. And for all the problems on this review, it's perfectly good to use 340 meters per second for the V. And so since we know lambda, check. We know lambda, check. We can solve for the frequency. By the way, the two centimeters here um, will create some interesting overtones, but it won't do anything to change the fundamental resonant frequency, whether the first, the third, or the fifth. So um, that was just an extra dimension there, just to make sure that you knew what you were doing. Okay, let's turn our attention now to problem number four that involves the Doppler effect. And here we're looking at um, in the first case for A, we're looking at the car racing away from us. So here we are at point A. The car is moving away. That away. It's sounding off a siren or a horn at 500 hertz. And clearly in position A, we are going to be uh, hearing a reduced frequency, a lower frequency, because it's leaving us. So if we turn our attention to the Doppler equation, um, this is fairly straightforward because uh, we're just solving for the new perceived frequency, so we just have to put in all the values we know and see what we get. So on the top of the equation, recall, we have 1 plus or minus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity of sound. And on the bottom we have 1 plus or minus the velocity of the source divided by the velocity of sound. Um, since the observer is stationary, we can safely kill off this V0 over V term because V0 would be 0. And on the bottom we have to deal with the velocity of our source and unfortunately for us that velocity is given in a non-standard unit kilometers per hour and we have to convert that into meters per second before we can do anything worthwhile with it so i will remind you that one kilometer is equal to one thousand meters whoops should be an m and one hour is 3600 seconds. And you can see how, like usual, hours cancel, kilometers cancel. We can figure that out.
Once we know that, we can put in our values. We've got 500 for our starting frequency. On the top we have one, on the bottom we have one. And since we are receding, that means the plus sign is operative. So we have one plus, and whatever this works out to be over 340. And that you can that you can put into your calculator. This is the same as this and you should be just fine. The other point I wanted to mention is that at point C, when the car is rushing past you, there has to be a moment when the frequency sounds like a regular car horn. Um, if you're located here, it sounds like a lower frequency as it moves away. If you're at B, it sounds like a higher frequency as it approaches. But there is one mm -hmm. spot, even with the horn itself at C, where the frequency will sound exactly like it's supposed to, 500 hertz. Question number seven. So here we're looking for what fractions of wavelengths can resonate in open and closed tubes. And by fraction of wavelength, I mean a fraction less than one. So I'm not interested in a lambda and a half or three lambda. I'm interested in things that are less than a wavelength. So if we look at the open tube, um, the, the first one where we can check out is the, the first resonant point is L equals one lambda over two. That's the condition for resonance in an open tube. And that looks a lot like this. Not a full wavelength, only a half a wavelength. The full wavelength would continue on over like this and over like that. Okay. If we look at the next resonant situation, we would have L equals 2 lambda over 2. That Well, that's a whole wavelength. The 2's cancel, and so it's not a fraction of a wavelength anymore. So our only answer is that one. However, if we look at a closed tube, our conditions are different. We've got n equals n lambda over 4, where n equals 1, comma, 3, comma, 5, comma, dot, dot, dot. And so if we put in a, a 1 in there, and we end up with a wavelength that looks like that. That's a quarter of a wavelength. That's a fraction of a wavelength. So lambda over 4 is legit. And then also the three solution is still less than a full wavelength, three lambda over four. And that would look, um, that would look something like this. Node still at the closed end, anti-node at the open end, and we get something that looked like that, three quarters of a wavelength. So those are the two solutions there. I gave you that problem, you didn't even have to think about it. Let's move on now to question number 11. And on this one we've got a water wave traveling at 5 meters a second passes from water into oil. The wavelength changes we're saying from 1.5 meters to 2 meters. So 1.5 meters here for a wavelength two meters here for a wavelength. And the question we are trying to figure out is what's the new speed of the wave? Well, we know V equals F lambda in general. And we know that when we travel to the new medium, V will also equal F lambda. But we don't have the same lambda anymore. The lambda has gone from 1.5 meters to two meters. So, two is our new wavelength. The question is, what's our new frequency? And the thing we learned in class was that because these waves must stay connected, the frequencies must match. As one goes up and down, the other must go up and down. So the frequency in the new wave must be the same as the frequency in the old wave. So let's figure out what is the frequency in the old wave. Well, the frequency in the old wave, if we solve for it, Dividing both sides by lambda equals V over lambda. V is equal to 5, and lambda is equal to 1.5.
and 5 divided by 1.5 is like 3.33. So that means that's the original frequency and that also must be the new frequency, 3.33 hertz. And if we multiply those out together, we get 6.66 meters per second. Devilishly clever. Okay, let's now move on to the question. Actually, maybe we should take a quick peek at 11b. Is the period of the new oil wave longer, shorter, or the same? Well, we have established that the frequency is the same. And guess what? If the frequency is the same, guess what we can say about the period? I'll let you think that one through. Okay, next question looks like question number 12. Problem number 12, which uh, connects back to what we learned earlier on in the year, namely that F equals MA. And in this case, if we look at the buzzer, and it matters not whether you look at this moment here when the buzzer's coming at you and all the waves are stacked up and you hear a slightly higher frequency, or when we have the buzzer moving away from you and the waves are stretched out and you hear a lower frequency, it doesn't matter which side you use. Um, in either case, there's some velocity associated with its speed and it's the same velocity on either side. So we're trying to figure out the tension force in the string and the nice thing is is that if we examine the forces on the string in terms of the circular motion there's only one force involved, one centripetal force involved and that's the tension force. So the, the net force is the tension force, there's just the one. And that must equal m times a but every schoolgirl knows that if you're going in a circle a has to be v squared over r. And that v is the v of what? It's the v of the source, the buzzer. So in this problem we are given already the m, we know that, and don't make the mistake of putting a 50 in here because that would be the mass in grams and you of course want to have the mass in kilograms. So 50 will not work for a good answer. Um, the R is given to you, it's the length of the string, so we know R, and all that's left really if we want to find the tension force, since we know the mass and we know the radius, is we have to figure out the velocity of that source. And to get that, we turn our attention to the Doppler equation. The central frequency is 1000 Hz, that's the known frequency. Um, you, the observer, are standing motionless, so the top of our fraction is just a 1, like before. The VO term disappears, and we have either 1, plus, or minus, depending whether you choose approaching or receding. Let's say we choose approaching and we go for the minus sign here. We've got VS on the top, and we can use the standard say 340 for the speed of sound, 340 on the bottom, and so let's see, the frequency here we know then since we've chosen the approaching situation um, will be at the 1010, and we can use the values in this equation here, solve for Vs, the velocity of the source, once we've done our Doppler work, we can bring it over back to good old Newton's second law and figure out the tension in the string. And looking over the rest of the problems, it looks like everything else should be very fair considering what we've learned and prepared for. So we will call this review good. Good luck everybody tomorrow and if you want a little extra bonus point for being especially studious if next to your name on your Scantron you make the anarchy symbol which is a star inside of a circle 
and I am informed that the star needs to go outside the circle a little bit to show that there are no bounds to your freedom, something like that. Hold on, stand by, I'm getting some oh. advice from a future anarchist, so you have to stand by. Oh, okay. I, I now learn that the star is not even a star at all. It's an A, kind of. But an A is like a star. Anyway, something like that. If that's right next to your name, even more bonus points for you. Thank you for your studiousness, and good luck tomorrow.